Hello to all. I'm here today in a bit of a Christmas gift from Wargaming, I guess if we can call it that. Thanks to, well, the luck of the draw, realistically. Did manage to score a nice present from Wargaming from a super container. So we're here today in the German Tier 6 Premium Destroyer, T61. We're on the map New Dawn, or actually we're on the map Trident. I'm hard trolling. And the mode is Epicenter. We're in 5 to 6 matchmaking, so we are top tier. Double carrier game, unfortunately, for me as a destroyer, so this should be difficult. This is my first match in the T61, but I'm familiar with her general characteristics. So we'll take her out for a whirl and see what we can do. Running my Z23 commander, haven't finished grinding out my German destroyers yet. We'll get along to it eventually. But T61, not a new premium at this point, but definitely uh, a relatively well received one. So T61, she's tier six she's the premium counterpart to the tier six premium Ernst or tier six tech tree destroyer, sorry, the Ernst Gaeta. Uh, she is a I believe captured Dutch design in terms of destroyer. And she is a good jack of all trades boat in general. So health wise, she's sitting pretty for tier six, prop toward the upper half of the pack, less than the actual actual monster that is the Ernst Gaeta. I believe Ernst Gaeta has something close to eighteen thousand, uh, and as well as the Igla and Gepard. So she is outmatched by her true. German tech tree counterpart, as well as the French, with their two thunder chunking tier 6 destroyer leaders. Uh, however, she does sit above the middle of the pack by a fair bit. She has four turrets. These are, of course, the classic German destroyer turrets, in this case, the 128mm low caliber guns. As a result, they have fairly low HE alpha of 1500, firing AP into the pencil coal here because he's showing broadside, by the way. And then the German Destroyer AP. So there's nothing impressive about German Destroyer AP except it's AP Alpha, as is the case with German cruisers as well. Well, we're pinning the Pensacola here, but as you can see, 3000 AP Alpha on a 4 second reload is nothing to scoff at, as I do get detected by my firing bloom, so I've got to be a bit careful. The guns are German 128s with the 4 second reload. There's four of them. ABXY setup, very standard. But what's impressive about this little torpedo boat is their torpedoes. So as you can see I just popped them off. They're quads. There's two centerline quadruple launchers. They have a range of 8 kilometers. They do 65 knots. They only hit for 13,700. But as you can see they have a reload of just 68 seconds and this is the stock reload. This captain does not in fact have torpedo armor's expertise which if you were dedicating a captain to the T61 I would recommend. AA wise as these carriers come a bit closer into my proximity. Not too impressive. Similar to the Z39, a tier higher, she only has a mid-range and short-range aura, so her A is basically non-existent, but that's to be expected. But the real bread and butter of the ship is the adequate guns. I wouldn't say they're impressive, thanks to them having German HG, as I mentioned earlier, but they're adequate to get the job done. And the torpedoes, which do low damage, but have a rather short cooldown. Let's see if I can pick off this destroyer over here. It's only at 900, so worth taking some shots at. No one else around that corner can shoot me anyway, so. I did give away my position to the Skangit, which really shouldn't be in this match, now that I think about it, because he's a tier 4, but I guess someone must have failed divisioned. We'll check that in a second. There is indeed a 5-4 division here. Something blasts me of HE, but that's quite alright. Let's put out that fire. Now her speed boost is pretty standard, destroyer speed boost, 8%, and her German, her German Hydro is not so German in that it doesn't have any extended range in particular, but it's pretty early. I believe her Hydro is the same as the Ernst Gaetis, although I will have to fact check that. It has 4km ship detection and 3km torpedo detection, so pretty decent for defending against torpedoes. Gonna sector here anyway. 
since I don't think many of these ships will be able to engage me. Do score a torpedo hit onto the Gangut. He's ticking a flood or a fire, can't tell. I will fire briefly because there's basically no threats to me. The La Galissonniere can engage me as well as the Pensacola at 13 kilometers, but outside of that, everyone else is out of range. So I just torped that Gangut, and as you can see, my torps are back up again already. Ryuho fighters headed inbound. He's dropped. He's scrambling a fighter for his ally. Gonna get spotted at 2.7 kilometers here. Thankfully for me, the fighters zoom away, so I'm gonna move out onto the edge and kill this Nicholas. Popping my speed boost so I can slow down a little more snappily here. I'm gonna finish off this Nicholas as I round this corner first. I know there's also an Jean Wei over there, or an Anshan, sorry. But he's not my primary concern. I want this war spite on the edge. How is he maneuvering? He's going basically straight and dealing with planes. So I'm just going to use those. Relatively low damage, but high reload. German torpedoes once more. He's turning out in a way, but hopefully he turns into chase. Eh, probably not now. He's been pushed away by the aircraft, so probably whiffed on those, but we'll go back towards the center of the pack. Continue to control the center. Haven't had to contest any DDs with my Hydro yet, so sitting pretty at a very conservative damage total. La Galissonniere looks to be crossing the corner, so I'm going to pop my AP. See if I can't get some free damage onto him. Now he does have a reload booster, so I do have to do this a bit carefully. Meanwhile, the Warspite takes one of my torpedoes. Looks like just a single torpedo, but for full health. I'm gonna risk smoking up here because I do want to take some time to farm some damage. Those are probably Legal Torps based on the twin pair and the fact that they're not deep waters. I'm gonna turn on my AA, help with those Ryuho planes. Do you manage to shoot one down with thanks to my sectoring? Sectoring, of course, if you're not aware, gives instantaneous damage. Uh, regardless of how strong your actual AA rating is, he's broadside switched to AP. So it can be extremely powerful in spite of a uh, low caliber. You saw that first AP or HE chunk, not chunking him very hard, but even with the AP overpens with the follow-up salvos, you can see him doing okay damage. Three pens there. As you can see, the gunpowder is not exactly impressive as this destroyer slides across. Anshan has normal torpedoes, remember, so do have to be careful, so that's why I'm popping my hydro. Switching to HE, you can see it does next to no damage. Hitting him for like 300 per shell. 600 there with two shells. Someone else blabs him down because of my low DPM. I'm gonna disengage myself. Thankfully for me, the Legal Lissonniere um, had AP loaded, so he does burn a salvo. He burns two salvos, in fact. Ooh, Alb is kind of frightening. Disengage myself, although I will briefly be spotted by the fighters soon. I am in fighter cover. Keep my A off to get as much Q time as possible. Fighter does dissuade my opponents. Gonna glide away from the Alba. Oh, concealment wise, which I forgot to mention, unlike the Thunder Chunker that is the Ernst Gaede, the, the T61 actually has a quite competitive 6.1 protection that is identical to that of the Shinonome and uh, Fubuki, the two tier six Japanese premiums for reference. I'm under fire from the Alba, as you can see. He briefly set me on fire. I held off on the damn con to try and not get reset on fire, but obviously I should have just waited and let it burn because he relights me at this point. Gonna have to just kill him. He's, start he's starting to show me broadside, however, thankfully. So I'm gonna be able to use some substantial shell damage into him. 
Oh, more substantial than my pathetic AC anyway. My smoke's back up, the fire's out in 9 seconds. We still control the center, so we're sitting pretty comfortably. My engine's pretty broken, and that's why my uh, reversing is rather sluggish. Don't expect to take fire in the next 38 seconds. So I'm going to pop my damn con. There's the Alba Torpedoes sailing past us. I'm going to take my little tugboat that could back toward the cap center. But I anticipate, unless they contest the center immediately or kill like three people right now, this game's probably just going to tick out very shortly. In what was a short but scrappy T61 duel, not exactly the most momentous introduction to the T61, but we were able to do well, substantial amounts of damage. We were top tier, of course, however, so that does make our impact a little less impressive. I wish I could have played a little closer up. Probably could have smoked more aggressively. Uh, though, although I am playing fairly carefully, as you can see, first victory here. Still top of the scoreboard, but a bit of a stompy game. So let's take it back into another rounder to play a second game before we pop into port and take a quick comparison to see how she stacks up uh, statistically against the other destroyers. I do know, without having taken that look, in advance, however, that she is uh, above average in most parameters, but kind of, how might you say this? She's towards the middle for others. Basically, she's a jack of all trades, but not really a master of anything. But anyhow, we're into our second match now. We're on the map Fault Line. The mode is Domination, thankfully. We're in tier 5 to 7 matchmaking, so we're middle tier. There is a carrier again in this match, so we have to play with care. It's a Furious. Furious is pretty good against light targets, so... Could potentially cause us some problems. Anyhow, you can see the mid-range is made up of the German 37mm anti-aircraft gun. Not a bad gun. But it doesn't have enough of them to form a substantial air defense aura. And then I think it has some 20 mils somewhere. So those are the 37s. Oh, and then these are the quad 20s in the rear. So the 37s form the mid-range, and the 20 mils form the short range. Another set of 20 mils up here under the radar set, if you can see. She's a pretty short-profiled boat. Strikingly German, though. Anyhow, spawning above A, gonna head into A. Oh, probably should have brought myself up to full speed. Her full top speed is nothing impressive, but workable. Uh, sitting pretty at about, I think it's 36 knots. We'll find out when we come up to full speed prior to speed boost. This puts her about on par with the Japanese destroyers, but definitely slower than the Americans such as the Farragut or Mahonigan, uh, for sure slower than the likes of Nevni and Fushan, and Anshan, the Nevni triplets. So she is on the slow side, and she lacks the improved acceleration of, say, the Gallant or the... what's... not the Acasta, but the Icarus. So she is very middling in terms of speed. She also doesn't turn that well. Her turning radius is relatively large amongst her tier 6 peers. But all that aside, we should probably look at the destroyer matchup. So Akatsuki, 6.4, T61, same as me, and Acasta, I believe, beats me out. I want to say it's 5.8 kilometers detection range. So we see the Akatsuki, so it's either me or the Acasta, both of which I can match in gunnery. So we do note that it's the Acasta. She's smoking up. Do get my defender ribbons, however. I'm gonna pop my hydro. Now, the British destroyer has British self defense hydro that has a 3 kilometer range. I have my full on hydro, which has a 4 kilometer range, so I'm gonna give him one set in case he accelerates and give another set to the Omaha. 
Gonna just try and creep up using his own smoke to block line of sight. There he is. So I need to control the range very well because he is probably running his own hydro. As a result, I am gonna pop in and out of smoke. At this point, the cruisers are too close to me. So I'm gonna switch to AP first of all since the Emil Bertin is broadsiding. And I'm gonna pop my own smoke. Briefly do redetect. You can see the shells are pretty lazy. Emil Bertin spots my old torps for the Omaha and dodges them. Omaha, on the other hand, does not appear to be paying attention. So he's gonna take some shell fire, or torpedo fire. Switch back to AP, but the Emil is not broadsiding as much as I thought he would be. So I'm gonna go for the Omaha here, before I switch to the Emil Bertin as we come up close. Still ricocheting here. No improved auto bounce angles or anything like that, unlike any cruisers, you may know. Okay, I'm pretty sure this Omaha is actually a bot at this point. He's kind of just killing himself. Not sure this will kill him. Nope, no citadels for me. But the AP just pen damage is pretty impressive for a four gun destroyer. I'm gonna give him one more volley. Just in case. I am detected, however, by the extra volley, so hopefully the Koenig does not reset me. Not exactly gonna have to jump on the Acosta. I'm gonna slow down here with my speed boost in an attempt to dodge. To successfully dodge the Koenig servo. Oh, the Acosta has decided that he wants to scrap though. Note my Hydro has gone down, but my Torps are up. He's gonna just beach if he continues on this path, so I'm gonna lead as if he's gonna turn in. Because I assume he doesn't want to beach. He's gonna make use of my fairly substantial hit point pool. There's one quad, there's two quads, the cast is out of torpedoes, and a prediction torps forced him to slow down. At this point, I don't need the second torpedo set to kill him off, so I'm gonna kill him with guns, take this capture point, see if I can get torps onto the Koenig, repair my engine so I can get up to speed properly. Some quick bullying of three tier fives. Gonna be four tier fives in a moment. This uh, 23 knot Koenig is not exactly going to have a good chance to disengage before I can torp him. As you can see, I only launched one set, but the other tube's already almost coming up thanks to that 68 second base reload time. Uh, even though she has quads, she has the same, the T61 has the same reload as the T22's uh, triple torpedoes at tier 5 for some reason, so. As a result, she has an exceptionally short reload. My ally behind me launching torpedoes. Spotted briefly by my hard detection radius. He's gonna fire at me. Thankfully, I'm able to dodge. He's also maneuvering pretty hard, as he should be. He's gonna dodge my torpedoes, but that's fine. We'll meet him on the other side, I think. He knows I'm here, so... Alright, this is a bit of a mistake. Closed too tightly. That's quite fine. He's gonna get the chance to shoot at me. Again, thankfully, his slow turret traverse and the fact that we're cresting this corner should mean I dodge the rest of his guns. He only fired his forward guns. He beaches. Give him the rearward set. And I'm gonna close onto him. My other tube will reload by the time his guns are ready to fire. I know exactly where he is, thanks to spotting from the Haruna at the rear. Turn in preparation, turn my tubes. Just going to use the gray line indicator as a bit of a guide to see where I need to put my torpedoes. Score one hit on the first wave, two hits on the first wave. You can see the damage is disappointing. Alright, this is unnecessary. Hoping my allies finish him off, to be honest. Because I would like to fin attack that enemy T61. My torpedo strike. Can I get the double strike? Can I get the double strike? Okay. Can I aim properly and get a double strike? There we go. There's my double strike. Now T61 was here, so I'm gonna pop my hydro in case he torped. Furious coming over to me. Not interested in that. Gonna repair for my engine because I can't slow down fast enough otherwise. 
doesn't know if it's a T61 torped. So I'm just gonna hide inside my smoke. He's in my A range. Just gonna pop that on the minimap so I'm better able to sector properly when I'm in busy situations and take this time to fire at the knives now. Now it's not great to fire the knives here. If the Furious is a skilled enough player, he can actually use that to blind fire me in the smoke. But I don't think he's that skilled. And he's moved off. So I'm gonna fire at the knives over the mountain. You can see the arcs are pretty lazy. Until something else opposes me. If possible, I would like to torpedo the knives now, but there's no guarantee. He is already being attacked by the Mutsuki. You can see my HE shell is panning for pathetic 300 damage. German HE. At its fine, it's gonna launch one torp uh, in advance, even though he's not anywhere close to my direction. Just in case he decides to make a sudden abrupt turn. At this point, I can see there's fire on this hull. So I'm gonna actually switch over to AP at this distance. I should be able to get full AP pens into either the upper casemate or the superstructure. 600 over pens. This time I get some pen damage. Much more impressive salvo, relatively speaking. It's still P shooter damage, but P shooter damage adds up. I'm trying to aim a little lower to try and get into the upper casemate. So get pens instead of these over pens, but can't always get what you want. Almost get him. Oh, we do get him with our AP on the last salvo for a Kraken. Uh, we do need to get some work done though, because the rest of my team on the other side has uh, been biting it. The carrier makes this a lot more complicated. If there wasn't a carrier in this game, then I would be quite confident just uh, dealing with this middle cluster, because their destroyer is up top in the north, chasing my carrier. So these battleships are relatively unaccounted for in terms of spotting. But there is a carrier in this game, which makes life difficult. Hopefully the Mutsuki can distract him for long enough for me to get back up north, get into position, and maybe make use of my short torpedo reload to try and turn this game around. I'm fairly confident if I don't get spotted by the Furious that I'll be able to do something about this cluster. Short reloading torpedoes, oh god. Short reloading torpedoes are particularly useful against enemy clusters like so. I'm gonna assume I'm gonna get turned toward, that is why I'm torping in such a manner. Okay, that's not what I wanted, I wanted to turn off my A, thank you very much. Do take some skimming hits from the Helena. They'll know I'm in the area, but hopefully I can evade detection. He's turning out and away rather than toward me. And Dallas seems to have hydroed down the Mutsuki. 17,000 health is pretty difficult for me to handle in terms of cruiser health. There's also Leon turning toward me, which is why I'm turning out and away. I can't keep hugging this border because there's a chance if he moves forward like that, that I would have been inside his detection bubble as I crossed, which obviously would have resulted in my untimely demise. So this is going to force my smoke. This fighter plane over here. I'm going to start on the Leon and then switch over to the Dallas. I'll try HE first. Switch to AP now. With AP, I'm aiming for belt. See if I can drive him off of a nice 2000 chunk. Alright. Leon dodges my shells. This is my last smoke, so from here on out, gonna have to play very carefully. Note that there's also a Helena right over there. Get a fire. It's not nothing. Helena has what, 4 km hydro? Regardless of what range his hydro is, my smoke's about to run out. Okay, they're ramming each other, so that torp set's already gonna miss. I'm gonna hold on to my other tube for now. It's 
Sadly, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to carry this. I'm gonna get what damage I can, but I'm gonna probably cleanly miss both torp sets, and unfortunately, my team is probably not gonna be able to clutch out this victory. Just gonna stay long enough to watch the torpedoes glide. Maybe this position was too aggressive, maybe not. But the carrier spotting me out and looking for me did make things a little more difficult than I wanted them to be. We don't miss our last two torp sets, unfortunately, so even in spite of the Kraken, although I will acknowledge that I did not do that much damage in some of the kills, we're probably not going to be able to carry this out. But T61, pretty flexible little boat. However, if I just sort spy destroyers at tier 6, we can do a bit of a quick comparison. Okay, I did not register the tier 6 part. So for counterparts, I'm going to assign some captains to these, I guess. I only have two actual other tier 6 ships in the port. I've since moved past most of them. But if I just assign... Typically, I'd use a Shimakaze captain on my Shinome, for example. So Shinome exemplifies the Japanese torpedo boat destroyers. Uh, and is similar to the Hatsuharu. So we go and compare. Hit point-wise... Or concealment wise, she's identical at 6.1, it's pretty good. Maneuverability 36.8 to 640, if you compare it to the T61. T61 is a little more sluggish at 35 and 600, so better turning circle and similar rudder shift but slightly slower. AA wise, let's not talk about AA. So, the T61 with her kind of versatile torpedo without TAE has a 68 second reload, which can be reduced to a 61-ish second reload. It has two quad tubes of 8 kilometer range and 13,000 damage if you compare to the Shinonome, a fairly powerful torpedo boat. She has a 3x3 setup, so that's one torpedo up on us. The reload time is similar at 65.7 seconds. So this is with TAE, so we beat them by a tiny, tiny amount, but they launch one more torpedo. They also have 8 kilometer torpedo range. And the torpedoes are similar in speed, however the Alpha is slightly higher at 14,600. Fubuki is a similar story, except she's missing a, uh, in terms of torpedoes. Gun power wise, she has 6 turrets to our 4, or 6 guns to our 4 and 3 triple and three twin turrets. Her HE Alpha is 2100, ours is 1500, so HE wise, she beats us out by quite a bit in terms of alpha, however her reload is 9 seconds versus our 4. So she's going to have superior alpha strike, which kind of matches the Japanese playstyle, but inferior, well not actually even inferior DPM thanks to our really terrible T61 artillery, as I mentioned 1500. But we're going to trade fire rate for big chunks, so... Gunnery wise, I'd say the Shinonome is similar, but the Fubuki is markedly inferior. The Shinonome is basically a Fubuki with an extra gun on the rear uh, in exchange for not having the Fubuki's 10 km torpedoes. So, 10 Fubuki has basically similar torpedoes to the Shinonome, which is like a full on torp boat. As we did lose that game, unfortunately. So if you see here, she has the same torpedoes with the same damage, but they go up to a much higher alpha at 16,000, and they have a superior range at 10 kilometers. A bit slower, and the reload is a bit longer, but this is a big jump in damage, and this is a big jump in range. On the other side of the Japanese tech tree, just for completionist's sake, we have the Hatsuharu, who is even squishier than the Fuki, but again it has those long range high alpha torpedoes. It does only have two triple tubes in the center line however, so that combined with the guns means that the even though these torpedoes are individually more powerful, the T61 ends up being more more powerful as a torpedo platform than a Hatsuharu in most general situations. Concealment wise, this actually goes down to five points I want to say 5.9 kilometers, which is better than us. The Hatsuharu does end up being the best scout at tier 6. Uh, that ship, of course, was in the tech tree and didn't have a captain, so you can see that. On the opposite side of the spectrum from Fubuki and Shinoma, we have the Iglo, which is basically kind of like a high-tier gunboat. 
Uh, first off, if I move a commander onto my Igla, let's take my Sirocco commander. Let's take Philippe. Note he has the improved survivability expert, which players are going to have access to. Anyhow, with CE, you can see it's markedly inferior with the French gunboat, 6.8 versus R61. Speed wise, however, he has a speed. Not only does the stock speed sit at, I think, 36. This is with a speed flag mounted. I don't have one on my T61 right now. The stock speed is 36, yep. So he matches us. And he has an even larger turning circle of, six, of 680. However, he has access to French speed boost instead of our standard speed boost. So if I go here, you note he has the French 20% destroyer speed boost, which allows him to go up from 36. What's 20% of 36? It's roughly 3636, six, so it's 72. 36 plus 72. So he can reach up roughly 44, 45 knots. So he's extremely fast with his speed boost on. Torpedo wise, he only has two twin triples mounted in the center line. They have a 70 second reload, so are inferior to us. However, each torpedo hits for a whopping 18,000 damage and has 8 kilometer range. And the detection is quite similar. So his torpedoes, while he has uh, two less of them, they do hit for 5,000 more each. So that's a substantially higher alpha per torpedo. So depending on how many torpedoes you hit, uh, this thing is going to be hitting almost as hard as you are, but not quite as frequently and not with as not as easily in terms of stealth torping. So she's obviously going to be an inferior scout to you, but uh, in terms of matching your torpedo damage, it is possible and she can reposition around the map more easily. Uh, for example, in that game we just played just now, she would have been able to reposition into the north a little more easily than we were able to just by popping a speed boost. Artillery-wise, she has five guns. They're in an A, B, X, Y, Z layout. Yeah. Two forward, three to the aft. So five turrets. They have a fire rate of 4.3 seconds, so it's just slightly longer than us, but they have an HE alpha of 2,000 and a much higher fire percent at 9%. That's our fire percent. Our fire chance is like, what, 6%? Yeah. So a much higher fire chance on the Igla. Uh, she also has superior range at 12 8 stock, if I'm not mistaken, versus our 11 6. Yeah. So gun platform wise, Igla vastly superior and then as i did mention she is a bit of a thunder chunker at 19,400. she doesn't have her hydro or anything like that so she does lack a lot of our general utility for that all-purpose t61 package but her smoke the smoke screen on both these ships are compared to are markedly superior standard smokes so this one has an 81 second dispersion time the shinonoma should be similar also standard smoke, 81 second dispersion time, whereas we have that reduced duration German smoke of 61 seconds, which can lead into trouble as you saw with that last game um, with the Helena and Leon kind of finding us inside a smoke screen at the end. Although it didn't really matter, I think he popped hydro toward the end. Anyhow, wrapping this up, module wise, uh, it's very simple, main armor is in slot 1. Uh, in slot 2, if you have access to it, take the improved Hydro Acoustic Search. I'm just waiting for a coupon to refresh so I can grab a Hydro upgrade. But if you have, have access to one, you really should be running the Hydro Special Upgrade here to improve the duration of your Hydro Acoustic. If not, and you're poor like me, then just run the Propulsion Modification module. Slot 3, Aiming Systems. There's no point running the smoke here. You're going to reduce your already short smoke screen time even to be even shorter in exchange for those just a bit longer smoke. Uh, trail, which I don't think is like a huge benefit, and then last lot propulsion for those start stop destroyer situations. This is almost a mandatory destroyer upgrade in my opinion. Captain wise, a very simple German captain here. Uh, this is a kind of unspecified German commander. Note she's, uh, this captain's only 15 points, but anyhow, preventative maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, concealment expert, that's the basic 10 points. And then there, from there, oh sorry, it's 16 points, if I'm not mistaken. From there, you opt into radio location and adrenaline rush. Now, if your captain is going up the line, then there's going to be some caliber changes. Is that 23, for example, has 150s. So taking BFD becomes more or less difficult, depending on if you're going to move this up and this captain up to the high tiers. So right now, my captain's on the Z23 with the 150s, which is why I have not skilled BFT. At this point, if you want that more gunboaty style of Z52, Z46, 
is what you should be taking. And of course, BFT does benefit the Ernest Gaeta with its low caliber 128mm guns. On the other hand, if you want to focus more on torpedoes on the Z52 and T61, as you can, then you should opt for torpedo armaments expertise with your last three points. I think both BFT and TAE have their merits. The Z52 also has pretty impressive AA once you get up there, so BFT ends up having a dual benefit. TAE, however, does possibly offer some more consistent gameplay. The German destroyers do tend to use a mix of guns and torpedoes, so whichever you emphasize is completely up to you. I think both options are, however, valid. Anyhow, first two games in the T61. One victory, one defeat. Going back to the scoreboard of the unfortunate defeat, we did do just shy of 100,000 damage at 96, scored 151 shell hits. Uh, scored 5 torpedo hits, shot down a plane, 4 in caps, 5 kills, 2 fires, 3 floods, 2 defender ribbons, an assisted capture, and 1 spotting ribbon. Team score wise, we were top of the team on our side, but did not quite do enough heavy lifting to negate the impact of these tier 7s in this match. My tier 7s, more middle of the pack, so didn't quite pull as much weight. If we go to the deal total report, note that even though I fired 151 shells, I barely did more damage than landing just 5 torpedoes, and in the T61 you can definitely land a lot more than just 5 torpedoes. But yeah, we had a pretty good game there, double strike and kraken, but wasn't enough. Nevertheless, we did get to show off some of the impressive qualities of the T61. Very, very positive uh, reviews on this story previously, and I have nothing but further positive feedback to contribute toward that conversation. Definitely a great all-rounder, and in even novice hands can probably be quite a deadly package. So I hope you enjoyed the brief review, and I'll catch you all later. Cheers!